Hello everyone, my name is Codemaster Jamal and today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own 2D textures for 3D games. This is the third installment of this tutorial series and I plan on continuing the series for a few more parts. It's come to my attention that my first video in this series has acquired more than 3,000 views, which I think is amazing. And since the video picked up in popularity so much, I figured why not finish what I started. I won't be covering any basic material that was discussed in later videos, so if you haven't watched the other videos, please go back and watch them so you can be up to speed with the information discussed in this video. So without further ado, this is how you create mud or stone textures for 3D games. To begin, let's open up our digital art software of our choice. You can use GIMP or Photoshop, but we are going to be using Krita for this tutorial. I will also be showing my full screen with you guys, since some people complained that they weren't able to see my cursor in the last videos. This way, you can see everything that I am doing in full detail. It should also be noted that I am using a later version of Krita, which is version 4.1.1, and the latest version of Krita is 4.4.5. Although if you really want to, you can download a later version of Krita if you need help following along. So to begin, start off by creating a 1024 by 1024 canvas, or whatever size canvas you want. But remember, we discussed dimensions in the previous videos. Once you have your canvas, press B to select the brush tool. On the lower right corner, you should see a tab that says Brush Presets. In Krita, even though it comes with many stylized brushes, if you want to use the stylized brushes that you downloaded from the internet, then you will need to select the Airbrush Soft Brush. Once you do this, in the top right corner, there should be an icon with the Airbrush Soft Brush you selected. Click the icon and it should open up a menu. On this menu, select Predefined and then select the button that says Import. This should open a file explorer that searches for where you place your brushes that you downloaded earlier. Once you select your brush, Krita will then import the brush into the software and you will never have to re-import them again. They will all be saved there. If you ever need to import more brushes into the software, you can do it like this again. This may change or be a little bit different in later versions of Krita, which is why I stick to this version specifically. I also decided to cover this since someone mentioned that they couldn't load Adobe brushes into Krita. With that out of the way, let's start working on our mud texture. There's a lot of different ways you can make mud or stone textures, including the first method I showed earlier with using smoke brushes. Typically speaking, mud is just a brown texture we slap on the ground. Due to the human mind and its imaginative creativity, we actually don't need a lot of detail for certain things as our mind tends to fill in the gaps of an illustration. However, that's not why you clicked on this video. You clicked on this video to learn a new skill, and I'm here to teach it. So to begin, start off by putting the canvas into wrap mode by pressing W, and then filling in your background with a medium brown color. If you're using Photoshop, I am going to include the comment from the last video that allows you to do the same feature in that specific software. Now, before we start using stylized brushes that we downloaded from previous videos, we need to set our soft airbrush back to its default settings. We just need a simple airbrush for this part. Next, we need to pick a color that's slightly darker than the brown color we used to fill in the background. Then create a new layer to paint on. Now, before we actually start painting the texture, there's just a few theoretical concepts that we need to go over. The first concept is what is mud? Mud, at least in the form of computer graphics, can be described as a bunch of cells painted together on a seamless texture. Similar to how the human body is made up of a bunch of cells working together to form one organism, you can see this mud texture as somewhat being the same. This texture is nothing more than a bunch of mud cells put together to make a stone texture. The same theory can be applied to making bricks. That being said, the actual size and shape of these cells are completely up to you. The cells can be in the shape of triangles, squares, diamonds, circles, etc, etc. I think, or at least hope you get the point. I would like you to experiment with this idea just as a bit of homework for when you are done watching this video. Now as for the texture we are painting today, we are going to be making these sort of oblong-like cells. So to begin, set the size of the brush to be at least 50 pixels. It doesn't have to be exactly 50 pixels, it just needs to be close enough. Next, while the canvas is still in wrap mode, start by drawing your first cell. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I try to add a bit of squiggliness into the line art, so that way it doesn't look too simulated and has a bit of randomness in the design. I started out in the upper left corner. Now, draw a similar shape in the bottom right corner of the canvas. Once you have both of your shapes on the canvas, start connecting both of these shapes by drawing lines in between them. Try not to make these lines too straight and add a bit of crookedness to the lines to make them similar to cracks that you would normally see in dirt. Slowly try to form new cells out of the lines you created until all of your canvas is filled and it looks something similar to this. You can view your texture by taking the canvas out of wrap mode. Wow. Now already, this texture actually looks pretty good enough to be used in the game. However, if you want a bit more detail, stay tuned to the video and I'll show you just how. You can export your texture at any point of following this tutorial to your project if you think your texture is good enough. 
The next thing you can do to add more detail to this texture is lower the size of your brush to roughly 20 pixels. From the cells that you created before, you can use the same method of using squiggly lines to divide those cells up even further. The best method is to make them as random as you possibly could. You can make all the lines converge toward the center or make all the lines go across. It's completely up to you. You can also have some of the lines just fall off the side. Try to make them as non-uniform as possible. Of course, once you're done and you've filled your texture, you can actually repeat this process a couple of times until you have a really cool texture. You could do that, or you can start using stylized brushes to give the texture a bit more depth. Create a layer under the layer of lines you just created. Select the medium brown color we started off with, and then pick a color that has a bit more white or gray within it. Now we are going to start using our stylized brushes, and if you download the brushes listed in my previous video, you will be able to follow along with the same brushes. And if not, there are similar brushes everywhere on the internet that you can download. We are going to go into the upper left corner of Krita and select the brush icon. Then select the predefined tab, and then select the Charface Painter Brush number 31, and set the size to roughly 315 pixels. It looks like a smoke brush, but we are just going to use this to gently brush a few spots onto the canvas. The trick is to just click randomly on the canvas, and wherever the brush lands, keep it. Try not to overdo it, and leave some spaces for the background color to stick out. Next we are going to select the darker brown color that we used to put the line art down, and select a new brush. It's going to be the Charface Painter Brush number 43. Create a new layer and make sure to place this layer on top of the layer with the line art. And just like with the last brush, just touch up a few places on the canvas. Preferably spots with the background color showing out. Once that's done, we are going to do something that we haven't explored in this series yet, which is the use of filters on our textures. Go to the layer that has our line art on it and duplicate it. You can do this in Krita by right clicking the layer and then selecting duplicate layer or mask. You can also do this via shortcut just by pressing Ctrl J. On the duplicated layer, go to the top of the window and select Filter, and then scroll down to Blur, and then select Gaussian Blur. Set the horizontal and vertical radius to roughly 55 pixels, and then select OK. Afterwards, lower the blurred layer below the line art layer. Next, let's make a layer that's above all these layers. Then we are going to select a brush from the second video called Spines. With the Spines brush, lower the size of it so it can fit within the cells you created with your line art, and then just place a few of them on the canvas. No more than five or six because, once again, too many of this will actually ruin the effect of the texture. Now that we have laid out the texture, go to the top and select Filter, and then Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. This time around, we are going to set the horizontal and vertical values to roughly 10 pixels, and then press OK. Select the layer with the Charface Painter Brush number 43 on it, and select Filter, and then select Apply Filter again. We should apply the Gaussian Blur we just applied to the last layer. And there you have it. You finish the mud texture. There of course are many variations to this texture and you can try experimenting on your own. I'm going to give you guys a quick time lapse of me importing this texture into Unity and then painting it on my level. If you guys remember, I started an unnamed FPS game for this tutorial. I was originally trying to finish this game in roughly a month, but it ended up taking much longer than I expected. Mainly because I kept coming across issues. I think now that I'm actually a more seasoned game developer, I can probably get a playable version of this game ready soon. This game actually has a name now, it's called Homestead Shootout, a sort of GTA inspired game based around something me and my friends from Homestead Florida joked about one night at this party. Perhaps sometime in the future I would take some time off from developing virtual monsters to work on this game, but for now I really want to focus on finishing virtual monsters. Well, I guess this will be it for now. If you enjoyed watching the video and stuck around till the end, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and devlogs. Keep making games! Till next time, this is Code Master Jamal. I'm signing out.